Hello, we're starting off in a video here because this is our potting area and it's in a right disgrace. And um, I often notice in the television gardeners, they have very nice potting areas and everything is perfectly twee, but everyone is rough as and ready. Now, I have a little problem over there. Look at my jacket, my sleeveless jacket and a clamp on top of it. And it's a disgrace with the, with the, with the, with the housing crisis. I have a wren and a load of little ones nesting in my pocket. And it's not fair. I mean, it's my jacket. I pay for having a receipt. But I don't think I can really evict them, can I? The little wren, the king of all birds. Now we go and do the proper video now. And by the way, you're not supposed to be filming birds in the wild. But if it's in my pocket, he's not in the wild, is he? <laughs> I wanted to talk about a few different things today. I wanted to talk about hardy geraniums and I wanted to talk about uh, maybe a few roses and a few other things, but we'll start off with watering. Now we've had a, a, a very un-Irish um, dry spell, very un-Irish, and people are out watering the gardens. As a general rule, most stuff shouldn't need to be watered. You only really water what you need to, what was newly planted. If a thing needs to be watered the whole time, it shouldn't, it's wrong. It, sh it should be. So you only water. Now here's a good example. That buddle, yeah? It's called Buzz. Buzz Red or Buzz something other. That, uh, that was planted there about three weeks ago. And you see it's wilty. You see it's very wilty. Because it was damaged, there was one that was damaged and it was assailable, only ha it fell out of the pot and, and half the roots. So I planted it, half the roots were gone. So this needs, that needs water. And I wouldn't mind. I'll give it a cup of water. Now, I, I would, and they don't encourage people using hoses and the reason is very, very uh, plain is because people tend to overwater. But if you have if you have a watering can, you have to go and fill it up and water it. So you're more inclined to be more thrifty with using the water. Now I use, this is our own well, we have a well. So I could use as much as I want, but I also consider, I actually don't like using water for the sake of it. I just don't feel it's right. So that needs a lot. These, these Shasta daisies were planted about a month ago. They get a bit of water. And they actually, at one stage, were nearly gone. I forgot about them and they were nearly gone from Wilton. They'll come back. So that's that bit done. Now here. Those are still these were newly planted. Those three there. As was the ajuga. But I'm not watering the ajuga because I don't like it. I'm going to take it up. These sanguisorbas were newly planted. So we give them a bit. I don't go mad. And what, this, to a certain extent, what I'm doing is I'm just holding forth until the normal weather comes back and we get our proper rain that we're supposed to get. So they need a bit of water. That's kind of enough for them because they were they weren't split. They were potted. They were pot plants. So they didn't suffer any shock when they were moved from the pot into the ground as against plants that you split, which are much more susceptible. Now this, this dogwood was moved uh, by the digger. It was moved after being in the one spot for five years. So that got a bit, of da a bit damaged. It's very, it's very light on top. So that's one that you could do with leaving the hose on it for about a quarter of an hour. But I'm just putting a little bit on it just to show. Now we go around here and we'll have another look. This plant here is the willow leaf sunflower and I took a piece up just yesterday and I put it here. And you can see it just here. And this is an, in, this is an interesting point. When you move a plant during the, when it's growing strongly, you remove the leaves. And the reason is very simple. If you think, how does a plant get water up itself? 
does it push it from the ground or does it pull it from the leaves and it actually pulls it up so the bigger the leaf the more pull so if you reduce the leaf you reduce the pull and what that does is it gives the plant time to get its act together to get itself sorted out to get its roots back working again and all the dead bits and all the dead bits gone and new bits coming on so it's able to hunker down and then when it's happy and it's got its roots fully established it'll go back as normal so that's what we're doing just so nothing else has been cut just these little plants and if it takes what i will do is i'll remove the persicaria gradually and allow the, the sunflower to have its head because it's a beautiful structural plant and it likes the sun this is nice to sell. now I planted these last week. Oh, th these two these two centurions a bit earlier than, than three weeks ago. That was these were planted last week, and that's an evening primrose called Fireworks, and that needs a bit of water. It didn't sell. It was the one left because it got damaged, and I cut most of the damaged stems off. It's actually doing okay. And this erodium I got in another garden centre. It was in. I always, when I go on a busman's holiday through the garden centre, I always buy something, kind of almost out of politeness. And and this another centurion, very silvery leaf. I wonder, is it hardy? But we'll find out. And there this out. Well, that's that done. And now we're going to. Uh, I'm going to show what we planted last week, and I'm going to dig up a piece of Solomon seal and show how to do it. I just happened to notice this, they're starting to go out of flower. This is Linaria purpurea, pure, pure you can see why it's called that, it's purple. But look, they, they seed it in there, and one, one is white, and one is purple. And very fond, these are very fond of them. That's, and there's a Hellenium, and it's doing really well. It's got, it's, I, I, I was tempted to Chelsea chop it, but I decided to give it a, not to bother, and it's, oh, oh, we have a problem here. Uh, day lilies, I cut every single flower off the day lilies because they have this bug inside them, sometimes a midge or something or beetle, and it's eating the flowers from the inside. So I decided to remove flowers off every single one, and that'll break the cycle, I hope. So we go in here. I didn't know this was here. Now look what's happened to the flowers. They're all going into mush, the, the insects inside it. So we, these go into the wheelie bin. I, I went around and took the flowers off every single day lily yesterday and I forgot there was one there. Look, it's an awful pity. Now, in the olden days, I would have got a strong systemic insecticide and hit the flowers before they opened, before the bees were on them, but I'm trying not to do that, so I'm doing it this way. Uh, we'll see what happens hopefully if i hadn't missed them there would have been enough insects would have hatched out to do all to kill all the to get into all the other ones and i would have wondered what i've done wrong because it's hidden hidden behind you you can't really see it and look beautiful flowers all for the bin but anyway i was going to talk about Morheim beauty i think it's Morheim beauty at a bishop it's one of them we had the big persicaria in there, polymorpha, and it came and dominated everything and I removed it and I left the ground empty because I'm still afraid of misfits. And when that got going, it was lovely and fluffy, but it took over everything. And this is, this is really good this year. 
Now, if it flops, next year what I'll do is I'll come to here and cut them. But we give it a chance. And what's good about that, this is the most amazing flower color. It's just that lovely, vibrant, burnt orange. Look at this for combat. Look at this. That's uh, Potentilla. It's not a great combination. Pot fluke, and look at that. And that's a member of the Rose family, and that's a member of the Daisy family, and that's a member of, I think, the, the square stems. I think that's the Salvia family, the Sage family, the Pita. And I think that's a member of the that's remember the snapdragon family, I think. But anyway. I took the persicaria up from here and I replaced it with a grass called, called Miscanthus cabaret. And it was a rough plant and it got hidden behind shrubs because as the garden is maturing, some stuff was getting the better of other stuff and some stuff has to be taken out and it was in an awful state so we cut it back and planted it about two days ago and we think it's okay it's going to come but funnily enough i was giving a talk uh, this morning to uh uh to, um, i think it's at tyrone uh gardening club and actually i gave one yesterday to uh to ross common garden club and one the day before to ross common garden club and they really went well uh good when I was giving the talk, I was showing them this here, lovely combination of colours, and lo and behold, there's Miss Cantus Cabaret. And you see what is different about that and Cosmopolitan. more on the inside of the leaf it's just a bit different so uh, if I had I could have used that one instead but it's too late now but we'll see what happens Look how good it looks. Look how big it is. But um, I'm going to have to get rid of it, unfortunately, uh, because I just think it's going to cause trouble. So it has to go. Next, maybe September, we'll, we'll get the digger, a little mini digger in and dig down a good bit, maybe get a half a ton of soil and get rid of a lot. Just like the Japanese knotweed, just get rid of a lot. Unfortunately, it's like a guest at a house party who's the life and soul of the party but never wants to leave. Oh, yes. I keep, it's a great thing about this garden is you don't really, there's no point in me having, oh, I see two things I have to, there's no point in me having a list of stuff because plants tell me what to do. Look at this. Look how strong that is. That's, you know who, that's, about what, 10 foot tall, 8 foot tall. That's two months old. That started two months ago, that wasn't there. That's grown from there to there in two months. It would get into the Olympics. And my previous video, I did the Chelsea Chop here, and you can see the growth from the Chelsea Chop and the Veronica Astrum. And in another about two weeks, you'll lose all that choppiness and it will just be completely different. job here. I planted these. It's called Tiny Monster and it is run to seed. So geranium Tiny Monster. So I'm doing this with it. Get the entire plant up. I want it to re-flower. 
it should reflare. If it doesn't reflare, well, compass tape is only over there, mate. You better reflare. See, if you don't reflare, you're going over there. Uh, this is our latest bed. That's uh, that we done. That's our second latest one. That's that's another um, Hellenium. That one is Saren's early flower, and it's always a good one for for Ireland. These tend to grow in climates which we have a stronger summer than we get in Ireland. So Saren's early flower is a good one to get for that reason, because it will it'll come a bit early for us. Uh, just a little bit to do here and they're the ones we, we did these in the video that's the polymonium lambert mauve that was they were split and done on video about what, about a month ago and look and look at these james there's the old foliage that was cut back and look at new stuff coming here and the heucheras Look, we cut the heuchers back and look, coming back. So they're going to be okay. And what was I going to do? Yeah, I was going to, well, first of all, we, we get this. We planted all this up and it has to be watered in about 10 minutes. There's the veronicastrums. I split. They're looking a bit, a little bit ropey. And that's very good goat's beard aruncus and they they look a bit sad and that's a eupatorium the one that's looking really well the stackies that was that came out of a pot everything else that is still be everything else was split including these it's grasses packing the claw that was done just yesterday there and you see the heavy cut them back Give them a chance to recover. Um, stuff that is finished. I'm actually quite pleased with it. I'm, I'm pleased. I'm quite pleased with it. But a gardener is never 100% pleased because gardeners like nature. There's always bits. There's always bits you add on. There's, always, there's no. There's no terminus with nature. It's a journey. Oh, that, that's the. That's the wrong. See the gap there. I, d I dug that up and moved them all. So that's what we're going to have a big clump of that. That's going to be really good. And you go in here carefully. This was bamboo land and we got the digger took all the bamboos out and the, the hedge is coming back nicely. See it's coming back nicely. And we planted some aruncus, not aruncus, uh, regersia, sorry, we planted regersia, and we planted Solomon seal. And over here, we planted two large astilbeloides. They're going to be massive. And then, in the darkest corner, we just restful ferns. I've never grown that fern before. It's, uh, uh, I think it's a... Uh, um, Oh, polystichum of some sort, but it's just restful. And our forest flame and our acer. And that's it finished. We just bark that over. What we're going to do is just dig up a piece of Solomon seal. Over here. Where the grass was, you see, it was too, it was too crowded for the grass, and it was leaning out, and it wasn't happy. So we moved it over. As I say, we moved it over there. But we've, we've something to go here. We put something that likes the shade can go in there. 
but I do think in the winter we're going to have to do some thinning out in the trees because it is getting very crowded. There's a very large which, um, goat's beard. That's the species one, Lunxtaceous. Super. For a big area. Everybody's going. I have to say, the, the plant that all the tourists, the tourists like the most is this here, the Korean dogwood. Everybody wanted this. And what's the name of it? What's the name of it? What's the name of it? What's Satomi? Cornus causa Satomi. And it's not available at the moment, but in the in the winter time, it's so it's, it's a lot of its field grown in the winter time. They're dug out, so there'll be lots of it. And the funny thing about it is, we buy it in the winter, and we, we're hanging on to it for ages and ages and we got a lot, good lot and then the whole lot sell in a week and it's not cheap it's about for 60 euros 70 euros that type of money but it's well worth it they if you look at the leaves a little bit of damage that was the damage from march a, april and early may when it was really cold and wet here because we took this is the uh this is the veronicastrum that we moved that we moved over there we took a big clump of it out from there so we have to put something else in and once again this is getting very crowded too so we might have to remove a few trees uh we might have to move some stuff the thing about moving trees is if you've four trees and they get really big and you end up with two but the two trees that you've left are so big they're bigger than the four trees when you started so you haven't actually lost wood you know what i mean like if you have you could start off with 50 trees that has a certain amount of wood and you could end up with eventually with with five and the five could be massive so you, you, you sort of have to move you have to move stuff when you start a garden off first a lot of the stuff ends up being too close together so you have to be disciplined and ruthless and and move stuff you just have to I know it's can be a bit sort of heart wrenching to get rid of stuff but it just has to be done and look at the ash tree we were worried about a few years ago that the ashes the ash trees were going to be in trouble and they're not in trouble they're coming up everywhere yeah, see. oh the other issue i want to talk about was spraying roses and we have decided to stop spraying roses anymore with the chemicals for Lico reasons, Lico, Eco one, I said before, Eco and Lico, L is the lazy, so Lico, uh, lazy Eco, Lico. And la last year was the first year we did it and they were fairly bad. This year they're not too bad. There's a little bit, a bit mildew on this one. And, but the new growth is not as bad. This one has hardly any mildew, a little bit of mildew, but not a huge amount. Now there, there are, there's, there's Uncle Tom's Rose Tonic, which is it's very expensive. And there's a few other, there's a few other products that we're going to try one of the other products. Uh, someone called Rose something, can't remember the name, but, but uh, uh, it's supposed to have no chemicals in it, which is sort of, we're made of chemicals, but you know what I mean, no, at those uh, synthetic chemicals, but it's supposed to be really good. We might try that, but I think it's almost acceptable the way it is. And look at this teak coming up through. It's uh, Geranium oxonianum. I think war grape pink or similar. Very fine geranium. Look where it's growing. That's that's based on geranium Wallichianum, which is geranium rosan is Wallichianum rosan. So I, I didn't come, but let's see what we're going to get. But, wow. Yeah, that's, they, they always have these sort of tubery things. 
uh, the common one. Let's see. These are self-seeding everywhere and they're all a little bit different. That's a lovely, that's about the same. And let's see. And there's the other color that's seeding as well. It originally would have been a variety called Buxton's Blue. And th that was predominating from the blue. But what are we going to do there? Either plant that now somewhere, or actually we'll pot it on, and then we put it somewhere. But it's really, really good. It was lost there. Yeah, you know, I'll just put water this and leave it outside. Leave it under cover. Let's not forget that's there. Now, where's my thingy bob? We're going to dig up some Solomon seal in here. This is um, Hydrangea runaway bride, and it was, it's, it's a very much hyped up plant, and it, it was very disappointing last year. Um, it didn't live up to the hype, and we were going to throw it out, but we decided to give it one more year, and it's kind of, I think it's, it's definitely getting better. Definitely getting better, so we're 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 we're, giving, we're we're going to have mercy on it and give it another year again. But it is definitely improving. You now, we we need to get in here with a hoe for ten minutes, and be careful because we have some astilbes coming up, and. That's a birch tree. That's a butterfly bush. We don't want. And but look at this. See, there was a very large tree here. We took it out and everything has just gone mad. The, the rhododendron's coming back really strong. But look at this, the size of, look at the thickness of this stem and hydrangea aspera look at how the flower buds that's the flowers are going to be that size wow that has really thrived since the tree has, has been removed and plus that one there was removed or left we just it just didn't it didn't it didn't regrow uh solomon seal there it is This is normally what you get, sort of a, a bulby thing. Or is, is it bulb or rhizome or... No, that's... That's actually geranium sylvaticum. It's fantastic geranium. Uh, there's a Solomon seal and this is what we do. That's, see where the flowers were all along here? They hang down like that, very elegant. That's it. Plant that in the ground. It is hard to get. It's not a plant. It's not a plant that we see in the trade very much. I don't know why. It's not been grown. I don't know why. Now I noticed uh, bamboo is starting to come out. You have to do a job there. But bamboo. Bamboo is okay, but you have to be in control with bamboo. If it goes where you don't want it, you have to be ruthless and get it out. If you let bamboo. Uh, bamboo will, if you don't uh, get the better of bamboo, bamboo will get the better of you. If you don't get the better of bamboo, bamboo will get the better of you. That's nearly like it. Like a, it's like the old story, the old song. Uh, you don't do it my way. And in times when there was doubt, 
I'll dig it up and throw it out. And that's the truth. I will dig it up and throw it out if I'm doubtful because you have to do that. And may I say, on this heavy clay, I did it my way. Uh, oh, look. Typical. Serves me right for singing. Look. Bloody day lilies again. You know, I didn't know they were there. So, the, the, so I think we've definitely... Have I... Oh. Another one. No flowers in that one. I'm almost to the stage of getting out the strong stuff. No, but I didn't need... If, if, I, hadn't, if I hadn't come in here to, to, to yap about uh, Solomon's seal, I would have missed that. And then next year, they would have all got infected again. And I would say, well, what did it go wrong? We have all the day lilies. Uh, and let's just finish off. We're not doing a long video. We're going to do, this is only going to be a short video. So we're going to finish off. What we're going to finish off on? Uh, let me think. Uh, no, not the big one, not the big. Not this lovely big alum, which is nice. Oh, this is very good. If you want a very dark leaf plant, it's very hard to beat this. Still be. And I, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to lift some of that. I won't do it now, but I'm going to lift some of that and put it somewhere else because that is that. The best way with plants is to see them grown in situ and then you know I know I could have planted up there and it could have been useless because it looked good in the pot but you can see that's that's good now I wonder what the only thing is I wonder how good the flowers are and but that's why I won't finish with that yes we'll finish here for Bascom Chexii album which plant I love and it loves me as well because it invites itself and it's there and it's there and it never gives a bit of trouble and it will grow anywhere. And all you have to do is remove the bits you don't want and give them to the customers. That's it. <laughs>